Hi guys, so the DUP are a strange bunch. They were told on numerous occasions about the threat to peace and to even the Union if they supported Brexit, but they ignored all of that. Now, I believe this is out of a deeply rooted hatred of Ireland, which is historical, but also the EU, which they see as a threat to their medieval mentality. They see the EU as a progressive entity that will force them, for example, to treat women and minorities with respect, and that they can't have that. And there are those within the DUP who believe that the Empire is about to return, and they want to be part of that. Anyway, as I've said before, they campaigned for Brexit, they told their supporters to vote for it, and they are still backing leaving the European Union. They threw their lot in with the Tories because they believed the Conservatives would not betray them. Yes, they trusted the most untrustworthy party in the United Kingdom. They lost the gamble, and instead of admitting defeat, admitting they backed the wrong horse, no, they want to blame everyone else. The DUP are a dangerous group of people. They have a long history of egging on sinister elements in Northern Ireland for their own political game. They toss the stone and hide the hand. They want others to do their dirty work for them, and when it literally blows up on occasion, they will condemn the action and then return a few days later to call for more. This brings us to this tweet by Nigel Dodds, or Lord Dodds as he is usually called today. He lost his seat as an MP some years ago, and he was sent off, like many failed politicians, to the House of Lords. He says here, Protocol talks are being dragged out with little prospect of an outcome which comes near to meeting the DUP six tests, UK government in retreat on Article 16 despite conditions being met long ago. UK government moving away from its command paper on meds. If UK government won't act, unionists must, and soon. So let me give you a bit of context here. What is he talking about, and why is this tweet dangerous and potentially illegal? First, let's look at the six DUP tests he's talking about. Let me add that the DUP have no longer any power over the UK government in Westminster, so these tests are for the DUP alone, which are basically useless. Anyway, number one, fulfill Article 6 of the Act of Union. This has been defeated in court. The Act of Union does not preemptively block legislation that comes after. Number two, avoid any diversion of trade. Well, this is a consequence of Brexit, something that you campaign for, Nigel. Number three, not constitute a border in the Irish Sea. Now, this is the consequence of the type of Brexit Boris Johnson and the ERG and the DUP wanted. If the UK as a whole had stayed within the single market and the customs union, no Irish sea border would have been required. But the DUP wanted that, and now they're complaining about it. Number four, give the people of Northern Ireland a say in the making of laws which govern them. Well, they do. They have Westminster, and they have the Northern Ireland Assembly. The problem the DUP have with this is with the UK government, not the EU. You used to have members of the European Parliament who would represent the people of Northern Ireland in Europe, but Brexit ended that. You know, the thing that you campaigned for. Number five, result in no checks on goods going from Northern Ireland to Great Britain or Great Britain to Northern Ireland. This once again is a consequence of the type of Brexit you wanted. A solution would have been for the UK to rejoin the single market in the customs union, but the DUP are against that. Number six, ensure no new regulatory borders develop between Northern Ireland and the rest of the UK. Again, the Brexit you wanted. Number seven, preserve the letter and spirit of Northern Ireland's constitutional guarantee in the Belfast Agreement by requiring consent from a majority of its citizens for any diminution of its status as part of the United Kingdom. Okay, I have a lot to say on this. First, Lord Frost has said on a number of occasions that Northern Ireland's position has not changed. So do you believe your own government or not? Second, when it comes to consent, which, yes, is part of the Belfast Agreement, why are we not concerned about the issue of consent when it comes to, say, Brexit? Brexit changed the game here. When the issue of consent is brought up by Remainers, the DUP say, Northern Ireland isn't important, Brexit was a vote for all of the UK. So the concept of consent is only important when the DUP deem it so. Anyway, back to Nigel's tweet. He says that the UK government has retreated from threatening to trigger Article 16 of the Northern Ireland Protocol, despite the conditions being met long ago. Okay, Nigel, at what stage are you going to stop listening to charlatans and liars? 
I've been saying, and I'm no expert on the matter, but I've been saying that Lord Frost and Boris Johnson are highly unlikely to trigger Article 16 for the simple fact that they haven't already. Are the DUP stupid or just pretending to be? If I can see this, surely they can too. Triggering Article 16 does not help Boris Johnson or Lord Frost in any real way. Yes, it may create a bit of a distraction from Christmas parties and corruption for a few days, but I think there are people in Whitehall warning against that. The DUP still think that the UK government will be their knight in shining armour, coming to their rescue, triggering Article 16, stopping the Northern Ireland Protocol in its tracks and enforcing a hard border on the island of Ireland. This isn't going to happen, at least in the foreseeable future. Why? Because the damage to the UK government on the world stage would be immense. And for what? To help a bunch of flat earthers in Northern Ireland who have seen their share of the vote drop continually over the last number of years? At the end of Nigel's tweet he says, If the UK government won't act, unionists must. And soon. Now what does he mean by this? Act. Bring down the assembly. Well, that would actually harm the DUP as we go into elections which are currently planned for next May. Or is he suggesting using the old DUP trick of issuing dog whistles to sinister elements in loyalism? You know, the ones who like to burn buses and riot. So, if the DUP don't get their way, they're willing to tell others to act? I'm frankly concerned with how easy a party that calls itself democratic is so happy to switch on and switch off non-democratic actors at the drop of a hat. The DUP like playing with fire and allowing others to get burnt. Let me know in the comment section guys what you think about all of this. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.